A good late afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Sage here. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. And there's no better way to wind down the day than with the latest market close commentary. So in today's show, we'll look at the overall ASX 200's performance of the day and also explore the gainers and the losers. And this will be followed by the shares that grab the limelight today, such as Propel, Met Cash, Pilbara Minerals, Sezzle Afterpay, EML Payments and ERA plus many more. Then I'll share the trending updates from the Asian and global markets. And finally, in the last segment, we'll take a special report on the cryptocurrencies. So let's get started. And the Australian stock market closed higher for the second straight session on Friday amid broad-based buying support. The benchmark index, the ASX 200, crossed above its 125-day moving average amid strong buying in the blue chip mining, energy and tech stocks. The market sentiment was also boosted by firm global queues as well as strong commodity prices. The Aussie benchmark index, the ASX 200, closed 0.87% higher. And earlier today, the index opened higher and rose as much as 0.9% following firm cues from Wall Street as easing concerns about US debt default lifted the market sentiment. The Aussie market ended highly volatile with a 1.87% gain supported by sustained rallies in a very busy week, especially focused on the energy, financials, utilities and material stocks. And on the sectoral front, all of the 11 indices closed in the positive terrain on Friday, while the mining and tech stocks were among the strongest sectors, boosting the market. And the material sector closed with 1.8% gains, while information technology rose 1.1%. Among others, the telecom, energy, utilities, consumer discretionary, finance, healthcare and consumer staples settled with modest gains. Let's take a look at the top gainers and losers of the day. An Aussie gold miner, Chalice Mining, topped the ASX gainers chart by rising 7.2%. It was followed by financial services firm Magellan Financial, investment and superannuation platform Hub24, and royalty investment firm Deterra Royalties, and iron ore miner Rio Tinto. Meanwhile, the fintech player EML Payments emerged as the worst performer with a 13.8% loss. And some of the other top laggards were drug maker Clinuvel Pharmaceuticals, Coal Miner, Whitehaven Coal, Domino's Pizza Enterprises, and gaming and entertainment group Star Entertainment. Let's now shift the focus onto the stocks that fetched the investors' attention today. And first on the list is the buy now, pay later firm EML Payments. The shares of the company tumbled as much as 14% following the Irish regulation updates. It was also the worst performer on the ASX pack. And EML shares were hammered after the Central Bank of Ireland imposed restrictions on its Irish subsidiary PFS card services. The CBI has flagged material impacts to its European business and directed PCSIL to provide it with submissions regarding the potential directions. The CBI has asked PCSIL. SIL to provide it with submissions regarding the potential directions which PCSIL intends to do by 28th October 2021. And shares of intelligent finance solutions provider Propel zoomed as much as 73%, reaching 17 cents Australian after it inked a deal with the US-based financial technology firm Square. And recently Square signed an all-script deal to acquire Australia's largest BNPL player, Afterpay. As per the deal, Propel will integrate its digital platform into Square's e-commerce digital payments platform. And the technical integration will help the company to leverage Square's functionality for the benefit of Propel's customers. Propel will receive a percentage of each payment that its customers put through the Square Payment Services. And shares of Australian conglomerate company Metcash fell as much as 1.4% after its chief executive announced to step down. The company said in an exchange update this morning that its chief executive, Jeff Adams, will retire early next year. And Adams will be replaced by Doug Jones, currently CEO and Senior Vice President of South African-based Mass Mart Wholesale. Doug, who is a qualified chartered accountant, will join Metcash on the 1st of February 2022. Shares of lithium producer Pilbara Minerals gained as much as 3.75% during the day's trade and the stock rose after the company announced the commencement of commissioning activities at the 
Jungaju plant. The plant is part of its wholly owned Pilgangura project. Located in Western Australia's Pilbara region. The company stated that this is the first step of staged recommissioning for the Jungaju operation. The fines Spodumene processing circuit is expected to commence production within the March quarter of 2022. And shares of energy resources of Australia tumbled nearly 11% during the day after the company issued updates about Ranger Rehabilitation Project located in Australia's Northern Territory. The uranium oxide producer informed its shareholder this morning that its Ranger project faces the risk of cost and schedule overruns. The company said it is not in a position to provide actual estimates, but it is evident that the cost and schedule overruns will be material. The company is one of the nation's largest uranium oxide producers and operates the Ranger Mine, Australia's longest continually operating uranium mine. And we've reached the time for a small break. Do stay tuned with me. I'll be back with more of the trending market updates. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Calkine TV. Welcome back after the break. Stay here with the Market Close Commentary by Calkine TV. And let us take a look at more of the stocks that grab the investors' attention today. And shares with the Buy Now Pay Later firm Open Pay continued the rally for the second day and gained as much as 7% today. The stock saw surges in buying after it secured 372 million Australian dollars in receivables, warehouse facility from Goldman Sachs and Atalaya Asset Management. The funding triples the company's existing credit facilities and includes just over 1 million warrants for fully paid ordinary shares in the company to be given to Goldman Sachs. The receivables warehouse facility will help the small cap fintech company to fuel its expansion into the US market. OpenPay looks to facilitate transactions for merchants and consumers in the US and lays the groundwork to support growth in the region. And US-based BNPL player Cezil also extended the rally for the second day on reports of its partnership with US retailer Target. The share price of the fintech company rose as much as 7% in the intraday trade. On Thursday, American retail giant Target announced the official launch of its Buy Now Pay Later offering, with Cezil ahead of the Christmas holiday season. And the company has also teamed up with US-based financial technology company Affirm Holdings, Inc., to offer payment solution to its customers. And now that we know what the stance is back home, let us move on to our next segment and understand the Asian and global market's performance. And shares in the Asia-Pacific region were trading mostly higher on Friday, tracking the overnight gains in Wall Street after the U.S. politicians approached near a temporary deal to avert a federal debt default. The market sentiment was also lifted by ease in crude prices, which hit multi-year highs earlier this week, leading to global equity sell-off. Japan's Nikkei was the best performer in the region by rising more than 2%. The index rose for the second day in the last 10 consecutive sessions amid receding fears over the US government debt crisis. The market rebounded after a sharp fall in the last two weeks amid fading expectations of economic reforms from the newly Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. And Chinese stocks also rallied on the first day of the trade after a week-long holiday. The Shenzhen Composite Index rose over 1% and the Shanghai Composite Index gained 0.8% as investors cheered services activity data. And activity in China's services sector returned to growth in September, reveals the data from a private survey. The Caixing Market Services Purchasing Managers Index rebounds to 53.4% from 46.7 in August. A figure above 50 point mark indicates expansion and below this reading indicates contraction. And in a similar trend, Indonesia's Jakarta Composite surged 0.9% and Thailand's SCT Composite gained 0.4%. 
The Straits Times index in Singapore also traded higher by 0.1%. India's BSE Sensex also traded higher by 0.6% in the opening deals. Bucking the trend, the Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong fell 0.3% and South Korea's Kospi slipped as well 0.2%. Taiwan's weighted index dropped 0.5%. And meanwhile, Wall Street ended higher in the overnight trade as investors cheered developments on debt ceiling limit extensions. The US Senate took a step towards closer passing a 480 billion US dollar increase in Treasury Department borrowing authority. The deal would extend the debt ceiling through to early December. The Dow Jones Industrial Average settled with 1.15% gains while the S&P 500 surged 1%. And the Nasdaq Composite ended 1.3% higher on the rally in the tech heavyweights such as Apple, Microsoft, Amazon and Google's parent Alphabet. And we've reached the final segment of the show. Let's take a quick look now at the buzzing crypto markets performance. And the major cryptocurrencies were trading mixed during the Asian trading hours on Friday. As investors took some breath after the recent surge, the global cryptocurrency market capitalization was quoting around 2.28 trillion US dollars, down 0.5% in the past 24 hours after disappointing performance in September. Bitcoin touched 55,000. U.S. dollar mark briefly on Wednesday amid reports that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission might approve the Bitcoin exchange traded product in the next few weeks. An investor's sentiment was boosted by a slew of positive developments as well as supportive statements from regulators. Investors cheered the U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's comment that the U.S. does not intend to ban cryptocurrencies and concerns over regulatory crackdowns have kept a lid on cryptocurrency prices in recent months. The price of Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, was currently trading 2.3% lower at around 53,900 US dollars, and the most popular digital coin has rallied 24% in the past seven days. Ether, the world's second largest crypto, was quoting 0.8% higher. It has surged over 19% in the last one week. And meanwhile, Cardano, the third largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, was up. 3.5%, while Dogecoin prices dropped marginally by 0.3%. And among others, Uniswap, XRP, Binance Coin, Stellar, Polkadot, Chainlink, as well as Polygon also received mixed responses from the investors. Thank you so much for joining us in that report. But that's a wrap, folks. Hope you found the informative, the market commentary informative. And we'll be back on Monday, live from City at 9.30 in the morning with the first report on the pre-market scenario. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. Stay safe. This is Sage signing off.